Well, good morning, or whenever you may be watching this video. Um, there's been a great amount of debate uh, today, especially today, over whether or not to wear a mask in the midst of this alleged pandemic. Now, some will argue that it's for your safety, while others will say that requiring masks is just one more step of trying to take away our rights and freedoms as American citizens. Well, uh, for those of you that know the type of devotions and Bible studies that I do here on this channel, um, you know that eh, I'm not really going to, uh, this is not a commentary on whether or not to wear a physical mask. However, I do find it interesting that one of the biblical characters indeed did wear a mask. Uh, and already, as you've probably seen in the title and the picture that just started this video, uh, that individual was Moses. So let's just examine, if we can, what our text actually says about uh, Moses wearing a mask. Okay, so, of course, here's the opening video here, but here's the scripture that we're looking at uh, is in Exodus 34, 29 through 35. When Moses came down from the mount from Mount Sinai with the two tablets of testimony uh, in his hand, he came down from the mountain. Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone because he had been talking with God. Aaron and all the people of Israel saw Moses, and behold, the skin of his face shone. It, it shined, if you will, uh, and therefore they were afraid to come near to him. But Moses called to them, uh, and Aaron on all the leaders of the congregation returned to him, and Moses talked with them. Afterward, all the people of Israel came near, and he commanded them all that the Lord had spoken with him in Mount Sinai. When Moses had finished speaking with them, he put his veil over a veil over his face. And whenever Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he would remove the veil until he came out. And then when he came out, he told all the people of Israel that he was commanded, uh, what he was commanded, and the people of Israel would see the face of Moses, the, and the skin of Moses' uh, face was shining, and Moses would then put the veil over his face again until he went in to speak with him, and that should be capitalized there, uh, the him is, of course, the Lord, uh, that he would go in to, to speak with the Lord. And, of course, the picture is that uh, when he spoke with the Lord, he did not have the veil on, he did not have the mask on, but when he went out to speak to the people, because his face shone so brightly, um, he did have the, uh, the the mask on. Now, if you remember the historical narrative of this uh, particular uh, incident, uh, this is not the first time that Moses came off the mountain. In fact, let's just back up a little bit further uh, for those who may not be familiar with the story. That, first of all, you understand that the Egyptians had enslaved Moses' people, uh, which at the time were called the Hebrews or the Israelites. Uh, they had been enslaved for about 450 years or so, um, which during that time suffered hard bondage, slave labor, and all the other atrocities that came with slavery. Of course, the Lord God declared himself, who declared himself to Moses' ancestors, and his ancestors being Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, now revealed himself to Moses and raised him up as the one who would lead Israel out of the bondage of Egypt. Actually, the correct understanding would be that the, of the story is that the Lord God Almighty actually delivered Israel out of Egypt. Moses is simply just the mouthpiece communicating the words of the Lord. Lord to the people of, of Egypt and also the people of Israel as well. Now, after being delivered uh, from Egypt and crossing the Red Sea and travailing uh, through the dry land and often the barren desert, the Israelites finally came to their main destination, Mount Sinai. It was here that God, uh, that they were told to wait for the promise of God that Moses would bring. Now, in this context, the promise of God, obviously, is the law of God, uh, written by the very finger of God. Now, I say this, with, that this isn't the first time Moses came off the mountain, because if you remember a few chapters before this, Moses had descended from the mountain with the first set of Ten Commandments, only to find the children of Israel 
who, uh, who had already broken all of the law. The Israelites, in, in essence, were tired of waiting on Moses to come down from the mountain. That they created their own idol god out of gold earrings and jewelry that they had on them. Um, and then they began to dance and to worship uh, before the Lord. Now, of course, obviously, this uh, caused not only God to be angry, but Moses was enraged as well. And we see uh, that Moses threw down the tablets of stone, uh, which he had, uh, which had the Ten Commandments on them. In fact, Exodus 32 says uh, in verse 19 that as soon as he came near the camp and saw the calf and saw all the dancing and the worshiping, that Moses' anger burned hot and he threw the tablets of out of his hands and broke them at the foot of the mountain as if almost to look at the law and look at the people and say, my goodness, this thing is not even working. Um, not that it's not working, but they can't even keep the law. They, they, in, in fact, this rebellion by the Israelites was so bad and so offensive to God that God actually declared that he would kill them all. And Moses, in essence, has to step in as an intercessor. We see this in Exodus 32, verse 30, uh, that you have sinned a great sin, and now I will go up to the Lord, and perhaps I can make atonement for your sin. And he realizes that the anger of the Lord is also burning hot against Israel. It's only after a time of, of intercession uh, and restoration, at least it seems like there's a point of restoration there, uh, that God, that, 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 um, that the Lord does uh, tell Moses to then, in Exodus 34, the beginning of the chapter within our context, say to, to, um, to, to cut for yourself two tablets of stone like the first, and I will write the tablets uh, on the tablets, the words that were on the first tablets. In other words, I'll rewrite the Ten Commandments. On, on these tablets which you broke, uh, by, be ready by the morning and come up in the morning to Mount Sinai and present yourself there to me on top of the mountain. Well, Moses does exactly this. Um, so Moses went back up to the mountain. He received the law of God again and other instructions from God as well. And Moses was so deep in communion with God. In fact, let me show you uh, one rendition of this. He was so deep in communion with God that his face uh, was glowing uh, with the presence of God. In fact, he was so much in deep in communion with God that he uh, that in this process of being in communion with God and relationship with God and receiving God's law, that he fasted for forty days and forty nights, and he uh, received the you know he was, the whole process. He was receiving the words. Of God. Now, according to our text, Moses was in such a deep communion that on his face, as you see the image suggested here, uh, is that God, that Moses was beginning to glow with what we call the Shekinah glory of God. That his face began to glow. And Moses' face was radiant with the presence and the glory of the Lord. Now, our text says specifically that Moses did not know that the skin of his face was shining because he had been talking with God. I find it interesting that in this text, that just by talking with God and just by being in a receptive position to receive God's law, the God's, God's very words, that Moses' face uh, shone or it, or it shined with God's glory. And, and don't misunderstand that I'm not going in some weird offhanded uh, idea that 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 when every time we pray that that and every time we speak to the Lord that our face is going to start glowing as well. Even though some may have have given testimony to this, I see there's a kind of a glow anyway. Um, but the glory of God shining on Moses' face was so bright that our text says that the people were afraid to come near him. Now. Our text doesn't say why the Israelites were afraid over Moses' glowing face. Uh, in, in fact, it's, it's probably not at all like our situation today, worried about if somebody's going to catch a disease or not. It's highly unlikely they were afraid that they would catch some kind of disease of glowing face if they got in the face of Moses. But when you think about it, perhaps... 
the fear came over them because of their previous encounter with God. Think about it. They had rebelled against him. In fact, if you know the rest of the narrative of Israel throughout the Pentateuch, or what's called the Pentateuch, the Torah, or the first five books of the Bible, then you know, in fact, if you really know the narrative of the Old Testament, then you know that Israel often lived in constant rebellion against God. They were always murmuring and complaining and chasing after idol gods. Yet, when it came to their encounter with the true and living God who worked miracles to deliver them, they couldn't keep one of his commandments. I find it amazing, again, that they would chase after idol gods that cannot see, cannot hear, cannot taste, cannot do anything for them, and yet the one God that delivers them, they can't even keep the most simple and basic commands. You see, it was perhaps this glory that rem uh, that was on the face of Moses that reminded the Israelites of their failure, their sin, their rebellion against Almighty God. It was for this reason that our text says that when Moses had finished speaking with them, he puts a veil over his face. And then when he goes to speak to the Lord, the veil is removed. Again, did you get the picture? Moses could talk to God with no mask on. However, when he had to convey what God was saying to the people, then Moses had to wear a mask. He, he had to act as a mediator between God and the Israelites. The people were reminded of God's glory and holiness, but not only were they reminded of God's glory and holiness when they saw Moses' face, but they were also reminded of how much they missed it and rebelled against God's holiness and glory every time they looked at the face of Moses, and thus they had to wear a mask. Now, when we look at this, this obviously, when you think of the representation of, of, of Moses and how he represents the law and the glory and the holiness of God um, that, 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 uh, that humanity disobeys, then the natural response of sinful, wicked humanity should be that we should fear the glory and the holiness of God because, of course, Romans 3.23 says, we have all missed the mark. We have all fallen short of the glory of God. I mean, this is exactly what Paul is talking about. That when we look at God's glory, I, I know that sometimes some folks have the idea of, uh, oh, I just wish we could see the Shekinah glory of God. I wish we could see the presence of God again. Really, when you think about that, if you were truly following after God um, and had a heart where you desperately need God's grace, I don't know that you would be lingering after the actual full manifestation of his glory or not. You see, every time you and I look at the Ten Commandments and the rest of the law or the holy and righteous character of God, we should feel a sense of shame because we grossly and abundantly fall short of God's holy character. In fact, uh, this, uh, this was the veil, the mask, the shadow that covered the Old Testament. They could never really get a glimpse of the full glory of God because of their sin. Yet our text doesn't end there, especially when you point it to the New Testament, where there is another person walking around, shining with God's glory, who would walk on this earth, who did not wear a mask to hide the glory of God. In fact, the, John will record this, is that the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as the, the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. The word who became flesh is Jesus Christ. He walked on this earth. He walked around showing the glory of God. And I, and I know that there's an element in which he laid aside his privileges, some of his privileges, as 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 of a full deity. But but there are times when he's showing his compassion, showing his uh, his his miracles to point to, of course, uh, the fact that he is the Son of God. 
He showed the glory of God. In fact, Jesus will say in uh, in uh, John fourteen nine that uh, whoever has seen me has seen the Father. In other words, Jesus replaces Moses as the mediator between God and man. Uh, there are actually a couple of New Testament passages that speak specifically and directly to our text in Exodus 34, and they are really, really awesome. Let's look at them uh, together. The first one uh, is in 2 Corinthians 3, verses 13 through 18. Moses referring directly to this situation in Exodus 34, Moses, who would put a veil, a mask, over his face so that the Israelites might not gaze at the outcome of what was being brought to an end, but that their minds were hardened. To, for to this day, when they read the Old Covenant, that, that same veil, that same mask, it remains unlifted because only through Christ is it taken away. Yet, Yes, to this day, whenever Moses is read, and talking about the law of God there, when Moses is read, the law of God is read, a veil lies over their hearts, and when one turns to the Lord, the veil is removed, the mask is removed. Now, if the Lord is the Spirit, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, and we all with unveiled faces, beholding the glory of the Lord, being transformed into the image from one degree of glory to another, for this kind comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. Let me give you one more passage and then we'll talk about both of them together. And that is in Hebrews chapter 10, uh, which is a, a, a New Testament commentary, in essence, of the Old Testament. I, and really the whole New Testament is. But if there's ever a commentary of the Old Testament, it's, it's, it's the book of Hebrews. But Hebrews chapter 10 says that, Therefore, brothers, since we have this confidence to enter into the places, uh, in, uh, uh, into the places by the blood of Jesus, the holy places by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain that is through his flesh, since we have a great high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean with it from an evil conscience and our bodies washed pure with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. So, so what's going on here? What is going on uh, in this uh, in this in this text? Well, Paul says in Second uh, Corinthians. Um, uh, chapter 3, that the veil is worn, the mask is worn over our faces when we look at how unholy we are compared to the law and the glory of the Lord. But when somebody turns to Christ, then the mask is removed, the veil is removed, and freedom is given now in Christ. We can now enjoy the glory and the presence of the Lord as long as we are in Christ through his his Holy Spirit. Then the writer of Hebrews goes on and extends his thought by saying that now that the veil has been removed, we can come to the presence of God boldly, not arrogantly, into his presence. Uh, that though Christ, that through Christ, I should say, uh, he has given us a new and living way where we are no longer ashamed and live under condemnation or guilt of our sin, that he has provided us liberty in Christ. Jesus Christ is why we must hold fast and keep confessing him as the only Savior and Lord. He's the only one who removes the mask of darkness of sin that was over our lives. Well, I know this devotion doesn't help answer your question as to whether or not uh, to wear physical mask, uh, but look at it this way. If the mask of Moses pointed to the glory of God that is found in Jesus Christ as the only savior, savior for sinful humanity, then if you have to wear a mask, and I'm not saying that you should or you have to or whatever you want to do uh, in that situation, however you feel like you need to either obey or reject the laws of the land, whatever that may be, if you're going to have to wear a mask, then 
why not wear a mask that does the same thing? Why not wear a mask that points to the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ? In fact, why not wear a mask that says something like this? Well, God is holy. You are not. You're a wicked sinner in need of saving from God's wrath. That Savior is Jesus Christ. He alone can save you from your sin and the coming wrath of God in everlasting hell. I'll leave you with that thought today. God bless you.